This is the next Bite of Life podcast, the place to be to hear personal stories from expats, digital nomads, and everybody else taking their next bite of life. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Next Bite of Life. This podcast episode features Cinnamon, a world traveler. She has been living in Lisbon for the past few months, and she's here to tell her story of how she moved from the U.S. and everything that entails, you know, that, that, that had to do with the whole trip and what she's up to now. So let's say hello to Cinnamon. How are you today? Hello. Thanks for, thanks for letting me come on. I'm so excited. I'm glad to have you here. Before I go any further, I have to mention that you are a vlogger. So you have your your YouTube channel and it's called Driven Spice. Yes. I love that because <laughs> Thank you. Thank Cinnamon you. Spice. No. <laughs> How did you come up with that name? Um, it was actually the name of a publishing company I had some years ago. Um, and my friend and I were just probably drinking wine and we couldn't think of a name. And he was like, well, you're really driven. And a lot of the stuff, like I would add spice to the end of it. So he's like, how about driven spice publishing? And I was like, oh, okay, that works. So that's kind of how that came out. I think, some of the best, <laughs> I think some of the best names are always after some alcohol. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's great. So so you're from um originally you're from Washington, DC, right? Yes, I'm born and raised in Washington, DC. And what was the motivation? Like why did you say to yourself, you know what, I think I really need to like get out of my comfort zone and move somewhere mm-hmm. completely different. Well, you know, initially before it was moving, it was more travel. So I had a friend um, who was a a business colleague of mine and we would do business together and we would almost kind of beat ourselves up if we didn't make certain goals. And um, she had just gotten a divorce and everything was kind of going great. Her life was going great. She just bought a house. Excuse me. And then she, I never forget, she called me and she says, I'm getting ready to go to the doctor because um, I'm having a hard time breathing. And I was like, okay, girl, just, you know, call me when you get back. And she called me next morning and she said, they said they have, a, I have a mass on my lung. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, what that mean? And they said, they want to, they wanted to break my chest open and do a biopsy. I was like, whoa. And she said, I wasn't ready for that. I went home. I don't know what's going on. So we're yeah. both like, okay. So she, when she got her head clear, she went back to the doctor, come to find out she had lung cancer. Ugh. Now this was one of my most healthy friends. Like she was a teeny thing. She drank green juice, did yoga every day, like literally the most healthy friend I had. And so we were like, listen, I heard people have cancer before. Listen, if anyone can fight this, you could fight it. And a year later she was gone. And what that did. Um, and then I left, I lost my, uh, stepfather, you know, a couple of years, uh, prior to that. And so there were a lot of people that I cared about that were passing away. And I think all of us assume that we have so much time and we just don't know. We don't know if we have two weeks, two months, two years, whatever. And so I was like, I need to get out and see the world. So that is when I more so started traveling. And so when I started traveling and I became obsessive uh, because that's kind of my personality. So I would leave the country almost like every month. And I found ways to do it really cheaply. And, you know, I would go by myself, which makes it so, so (laughs) much cheaper, you know, and you can kind of rock out and live the way you want to if you're just going by yourself. And I would get, it, you know, just one carry on and I just started traveling the world. And so when you open yourself up to those situations, you kind of get a better idea of what's out there. And I think I had always toyed with the fact of I'm definitely not going to retire in the States, but I didn't anticipate like moving out of the country yeah. um, so soon. And of course, then our leadership changed in the u.s um and so i think everyone was like what the hell like (laughs) everyone was kind of toying with that joke like you know we need to move but you know and then other things started happening and just you know if you pay attention also you know day trade and if you pay attention to just basic economics um you don't stay in a rising market forever that's just not like how it goes and so there's you know, usually there's an expansion for about, you know, five to seven years. We were 10 years in. Um, so a recession was expected. And if you're looking at the back end of the market, it, it kind of resembled what I remember happening in 2008, 
um, and I lost everything. So I probably have PTSD <laughs> from that. So I just uh, had to start all over and, you know, seeing the back end of the market, like, okay, things are rising. They're not rising with, you know, huge volume. You know, you're not yeah. seeing the, the, the excitement of the numbers going up. So I was just like, yeah, it's, it's, it's gearing to break down. But this COVID thing, nobody was expecting that. Of course. I mean, I remember like 2008 when everything kind of hit the fan. It was mm-hmm. just, I didn't lose everything, but we had so many rental units where the people that were renting could not afford their rent, which right. meant that it was upon us to like work, you know, extra shift and get another job and do this mm-hmm. all the way trying to like you know what is that saying about throwing a bucket of water out of like a sinking ship and it was just insane we couldn't keep up with the tide and one day my husband is like you know what this is where we are this is what we need to do you just Mm -hmm. need to let go realize that you can so we had to make some serious decisions and so you must have had to do the same thing when that happened absolutely absolutely it was go ahead it was hard because it was and you know in in dc or any of the major cities, in my opinion, it's you're pushed on this, you know, just goals. You got to go get it. You got to, you know, you got to hustle. You got to do that. And I started that pretty early on. And what I didn't know, because I, you know, I bought real estate. I was day trading. I was doing all these things that I thought, you know, create wealth. And I was making a very good amount of money and I was doing everything kind of by myself, but I had no life. Like I worked all the time. Yeah. And that hamster wheel, right? (laughs) Yeah. And so, you know, when it was time to, you know, when I lost everything, I had associated my level of success by how much money I made. So when I wasn't making money and when I lost my investment properties and things like that, I immediately felt that I was a failure and got depressed and just was like, couldn't get my life together. But the whole world was shattering at the same time. So that was semi helpful <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have to look outside of your window and see that you know you're not alone really Absolutely. it was really it, horrible it, it really um just changed the way that I wanted to do the second half of my life once I got out of the depression it really changed uh the way I wanted to live more um minimally and I wanted to really take the time to kind of live life and and grow my relationships yeah. So now you do day trading full time or do you have any other? I don't do it full time. I don't sit in front of uh, I kind of wait for um, positions that I'm looking for entry or exit. Mm-hmm. Um, and depending on if I'm going to be sitting in front of a computer all day, I'll mm-hmm. do a couple of trades. It, de- it really depends on where the market is, if it's doing the sideways thing, if it's, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. But um, yeah, depending on what my expectations are, I will uh, sit in front of a computer all day if I'm waiting for my entry to, to come in and come out. Or um, I might do a little bit of swing trading where I'm going in a position and I may come out, you know, at the end of the week or maybe next week. But this has been enough to sustain a lifestyle, right? I'm yeah, I do my- both. I also have a digital marketing company. So between the two of those is, is what I do. Oh, okay. So now when you decided you were going to move out of the country after the devastating loss of your friend and family. Why did you pick Portugal per se? Had you been there before you you moved? You know what? When I decided I wanted to move there, I hadn't been here. I hadn't been to Portugal yet. Um, At the time I figured, so I got rid of everything Mm -hmm. um, for the most part. So in my mind, I was reading all the articles, all the blogs online. Everyone was talking about how affordable Portugal was, how this and that. I'm right. I think I had met, I, I may have met someone. No, I didn't. I can't remember what made me take the jump. And again, I, I feel bad because I don't recommend anyone does it the way that I did it <laughs> because yeah. it was so random. It was so, I don't, I don't know if I did it out of depression or whatever, but I was just moving fast and probably yeah. didn't consider a lot. And so I decided I wanted to move there and I went to visit. And when I went to visit, the energy was so good. I was a little bit concerned because I know we probably have completely different experiences with Spain, but every time I've gone to Spain, I've actually had to deal with some racial issues. So oh, really, I was concerned that if I want that because Portugal and Spain were so close together, that they may have the same type of energy. And funny enough, now that, you know, my video came out, people were saying that like, oh, Portugal's, you know, it's a race issue there. So far, I'm not going <laughs> to say it's not there. I'm just going to say I haven't experienced it yet. Yeah. Um. So I went there and it was just 
it felt like home. Like it, the, the energy, the people were super nice to me, super kind to me. And I just, I just, I was like, all right, I'm moving here. And the, in the grand scheme of things, I knew that if it didn't work, I could find somewhere else. I could go somewhere else. It's just me. And I didn't have a bunch of stuff. So I was like, you know, let's just try it out. It's funny that you mentioned racial issues. I mean, experiences between the same, I mean, the same age group, the same looks, the same everything right. is so different. I remember yeah. like Warsaw was my, I mean, absolute worst nightmare. Mm. I had been in Krakow with, with my husband and we had such a great time. And then mm -hmm. we decided to go to Warsaw for the weekend. And it's like less than a two hour ride, but it was just the worst experience yeah and it's just amazing after i wrote the blog post about it everybody was like well i've been there never had any problems and uh, right. you know and it's just weird because it's like yeah everything is different i haven't had any problems in spain doesn't mean it doesn't exist but everybody right and i think that's the, that's the important thing because i when people say that i don't just because something did I didn't experience something doesn't mean it's not true. You know what exactly. I mean? So, and so I feel <laughs> awkward even when people ask me that, cause I'm like, I don't want to tell you no. And then you experience it, you know, it's just, yeah. you just always have to keep your wits about you. And I feel like if you travel more, you know, that anyway, there's just going to exactly. be some people that are just not going to like you because the pigment of your skin. And it's nothing yeah. you can do about that. You just have to learn how to kind of deal. And so um, I've also been getting a lot of questions of like, why, why didn't you go to Africa? And I'm like, yeah, well, you want me to go to the whole continent? Like, did you have a country <laughs> specific that you wanted me to go to? And secondly, if, if they listen to everything else I said of being closed and that type of thing, you can't just yeah. commute back and forth to Africa. Like, that's exactly. not something I'm even interested in doing. I'm, I'm secondly, from Africa and I wouldn't move back to Africa. You know, I mean, I love my country and everything, but I wouldn't move back to Nigeria. You know, I know. It's, and it, and it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's been so interesting how many times I've gotten that question. Almost the, the people are angry with me. And, yeah. and then sometimes I know I'm, t I'm getting it from a person who has never even been there. Exactly. <laughs> or even been being outside of their little bubble, right? <laughs> I've been there and not to say anything about um, negatively about Africa. I think the thing that people need to understand when they want to move out the country you have to be real with yourself as to the amenities you want in yep. said country, okay? Yes. Whether it be in Europe, whether it be in Africa, whether it be in Asia. And, you know, some people want beaches. Some people want, you know, uh, the woman I talked to the other day, like having a really strong medical uh, facility there was important yeah. to her. So she picked Poland. You know, so you have to figure out what is important to you in regards to your amenities and choose your country in that way. Exactly. Um, but I, I've been to... Um, couple and then too like I only go to countries where I don't have to go take shots and yeah. so if I didn't have to take any shots to come to Portugal and I didn't have to take any shots to get to, to South Africa which is why I went to South Africa I want to go to Tanzania uh but I have to get shots and I, that's why it's been on the back burner because I'm scared of getting <laughs> plus I I think also not just that people don't realize how expensive life is there yeah. I mean it's one thing if you live in you know with your family and you have everything, but even that is expensive. But man, the rent in like Lagos, for instance, like it's insane. You yeah. can expect to pay like $2,000 for one bedroom. Are you nuts? That yeah. pays for like a whole month of living. Not yeah. only that, the, the, the plane ticket, the prices are insane. The plane <laughs> ticket, seriously. <laughs> they don't the really, they're like, ticket. yeah, go to Africa. I'm like, yeah, I like to visit my family too, but I'm not paying like 1800 every, you know, just to go and come back. And you have a two week vacation, right? You, yeah. You're there, you get over the jet lag and it's time to come back. Right. But they, you know, they, people don't realize that there are all these things. They think that if you're black, you need to go to Africa. If you're here, yeah. you need to go there. But everybody yeah. has different experiences. Right. And so I'm glad that you chose to go outside of your comfort zone. You found what you liked about Portugal and you decided to go there. Yeah. So and just one, one other thing to touch on on race really quickly, because I'm also yeah. hearing, you know, everyone talks about, you know, the past of Portugal. And I understand that. Yeah. And particularly when they're American, I'm like, you do you do know America's past. With, yeah, like, exactly. you, know, <laughs> you know, you may try and hide it as much as you want, but it's yeah, there. Like, you, yeah. like if we're talking about past, not to mention in America, like two months ago, a man just got shot for being black and running. Like, are we serious yeah. right now? Yeah, exactly. I know. I just I've never understood how it's easy to like 
you know, paint a picture that you're so comfortable with and you don't see your own faults. Right. It's like somebody calling me, like if somebody, I saw somebody in the street and say, hey, you fat girl. I'm like, uh, duh. What, you don't <laughs> think I see myself every day, you asshole? You know, it's like, yeah, I can see myself, but I can also see outside of myself. So right. I don't understand why a lot of people, especially Americans, don't see that. I mean, we see that over and over again. They see what they want to see. And part of it is because they don't travel much. So they don't really know yeah. what exists outside of their little bubble. Yeah. Yeah. And if anyone's so, listening to this and they want to travel more, um, I, I, it, the thing you have to understand is once you get out of America, tickets are not expensive. America no. keeps us in this bubble that for you to get out of here, uh, it's like thousands of dollars. But once you get to like, like Europe, you can get tickets for like 20, 20, 20 euros, 40 euros. Um, you Five can travel pounds. all. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting because the woman I was talking to who lives in Romania with her kids, she's moving to Portugal. And she's like, yeah, I have tickets for $20 per person to go to Portugal from Romania. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> No, 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 because, yeah, because even Spirit Airlines, you'll pay several hundred, I guess, to move across the country or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's and, it, and there's different there's different hacks, you know, and there's things that, you know, even if you want to take on the technical side, when someone can see your IP addresses in Europe versus in the States, these, these aggregators charge you more. I mean, that's yeah. a real thing. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of tricks and things you can do to make traveling more affordable. Um, but if you want to do it and you think you can't afford it, you just need to get out of America. Like once you get out of America and then you start planning your travel outside of America, it's so much more affordable. Yes, it is. So great advice there. Look for the travel hacks. <laughs> <laughs> now, were there any other countries that you, you, you had considered apart from Spain and Portugal? Or No, actually, <laughs> Portugal was the... <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me Portugal was the only one but I tend to do random things like that like even when I went to college when <laughs> this is sound it's gonna sound really ignorant but it, it was it was very ignorant on my behalf I didn't know that college would like reject you I thought that like if you said you were going to pay them they were going to say yeah <laughs> like I knew <laughs> that like Ivy League schools could reject yeah. you because they were like at a different level but I just thought every other school if you apply then you just get in so I applied to one college <laughs> Oh, geez. <laughs> that was sweet high school. To, <laughs> I applied to one college and granted I got in, but I didn't know that that was a thing that you like. <laughs> that you applied to like 700 and then you get like two. <laughs> I had no idea, which is probably good because I probably would have stressed my obsessive self out. So yeah, when it was <laughs> Portugal, I was like, yeah, I'm gone. I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm going to go. And I was like, maybe it's not forever. Maybe it's for however long, but um, I'm just going to go. I got to make this move. Well, that's the beauty of being, you know, able to travel and making decisions for yourself. You can try it out. If you don't like it, you can just move on to the, you're not locked in. And I yeah. think sometimes people think if they move and they did, you know, and they regretted it, they feel like a failure or something. I'm like, you only have to live up to what you expect from yourself. Right. You Absolutely. really shouldn't care what anybody else thinks because you need to make the best life. They can just say, Hey, yeah, I like that. And give you a like, or, you know, give you one star or five star review or whatever it is. But ultimately you're the one that needs to be comfortable with your decision and if you don't right. like it then change it right did you did you move to portugal uh portugal by yourself or did you move with someone i did I, I moved there by myself um and i stayed this was there was um also a gentleman i met years ago who was from italy and he just moved all across the world and he was also one of the reasons why i moved because i met him actually on tinder we were, he was in Washington, D.C., and he put on his profile that he didn't want to date anyone. He wasn't looking for a hookup. He just wanted to go to dinner and practice his English. And I was like, that's right up my alley. Exactly. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, so we went to dinner, and it was so amazing because he was basically telling me how he worked for this company in Italy, and they were going through some things, and they accused him of some, some stuff. So he had to prove, you know, prove his name was good, and he had to go to court. So, of course, while he was in court, he couldn't work there. <clears throat> and he yeah. was explaining to me how he had dedicated so many years to this company that paid great money, um, but didn't have a life. So during this time, he was just traveling the world. And I was like, by yourself? And he's like, yeah. And I'm sitting there like mouth open, like, weren't you scared? <laughs> and he, I would never forget. And he said this really slow because he was practicing his English. And he goes, I was terrified 
Yeah. And I'm like, what? And so I'm listening to all these, these stories of him going to different places. So he's been like a major, you know, major encouragement throughout the process of me considering it. And um, he said, you know, when you go to Portugal, don't commit to anything long term now. He says, just, you know, stay in Airbnbs, mm-hmm. um, you know, throughout your you know first six months there and then mm-hmm. kind of decide where you want to live because you don't want to commit to something and you may not like it. And I'm, it was probably one of the best advice that he could give because there's certain right. things you won't know until you get there and even how the structure that the houses are built some of the installation is kind of low mm-hmm. so it'll be really really cold in the winter um in your house so I wasn't expecting yeah. that and you I just described that. Malta and Spain <laughs> would you say I said you've just described Malta and Spain <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and you don't know what that feels like in your bones until you experience yeah. <laughs> your first winter. So, you know, so there's certain kind of nuances that you, that I wouldn't know. And then the neighborhoods, if I, if it was more close, again, you talk about those amenities again, of do I want to be walking distance from a grocery store? Do I want to be closer mm-hmm. to the Metro? And you start to figure out the city. And if I would have committed to an apartment, as soon as I got there, um, I don't, I, I think I probably would have been a little bit more frustrated. So then when it was time to say, okay, I like this neighborhood, I felt so much more confident in my decision. Yeah, that's so great because, you know, a, like you mentioned the cold and the dampness. When we lived in Sevilla, which is one of the hottest places in the summertime, you should see how we dressed in the winter. We were like football players and then some, because <laughs> you've got, you know, and the heater, nothing, nothing yeah. warmed you up. Yeah. So these are things that you need to be aware of. And I remember yeah. Malta, like the damp would come in every week. I had to scrub down the walls with bleach because <laughs> yeah. you know you just get mold. It was yeah. just so so damn cold inside. Yeah, you know, warmer outside, and you know you have to keep the windows open. It was just so many things. So these are all the things that you need to figure out before you before you actually make a commitment. <laughs> yeah, and, right. And I, right, I agree. And I don't, it, I don't even feel like you would know. Um, and one of the other things of advice that I feel like um, I kind of wish I would have done, but spending the summer there when I first got there was great. But looking for an apartment, even in the States, I think the best time to look is like October through like March because the prices are, tend to be cheaper. Yeah. And um, there's more inventory. People are, 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 you know, when it's during the summer, you're like battling with people who were there for the summer. You're battling with people who may be studying there or visiting there. Yeah. Um, and then in September, what I found in Portugal is a lot of people I'm battling with people who are looking for housing for, you know, school. Cool. Yeah. So once it got to October, things started to slow down and, you know, I could really look. And at the time, you know, I was in a relationship, so we were looking for, you know, both of us. Um, oh, back up, back up. <laughs> relationship. Ooh, wait a minute, was, wait a minute. <laughs> I was. <laughs> oh, tell me all about that. I mean, yeah, I think I, I met him. At, uh, I think I was there for three months or so. So when I first got there, my friend from Italy, um, he introduced me to a friend that he had met when he came to Portugal. And um, he was like, you know, I want you to have at least one person that you know there. So I met that guy and we, I don't even want to. <laughs> <we laughs> oh, yes, you did. Is, is a strong word. Um, we, we just hung out for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, then I dropped that one. And then I met... Um, my ex and we dated for six months and I fell madly in love with him and (laughs) it was it was really a sad story because I'm still madly in love with him but I later learned that he was he's just dishonest in a variety of ways and so I had to kind of walk away from that but I I appreciate the time when we were together I mean he treated me like a dream and he was just really kind um but then when you learn about things being dishonest you you yeah. start to wonder about so many other things <laughs> exactly oh that's disappointing you know it's but yeah at least you put yourself out i haven't there. like loved anyone in decades <laughs> oh. <laughs> so so yeah it was between that and covid all kind of hit at once and i was like listen i can't deal <laughs> <laughs> so you're like back to the single life for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Indeed, and apparently for a while, because now you have to deal with someone having COVID, possibly. Yes. <laughs> well, it sounds like before COVID nineteen, like the single life wasn't too bad there. I mean, no, you had I been there for just a short so, time, right? And people ask me how dating is, and 
my, even my dating in the States was just so random. And I was never really the person that felt like, oh my God, I got to get married and have kids. Like, that's just never been my thing. So yeah, me too. <laughs> I can, I can like, you know, if it works for a bit, cool. If it doesn't, I'm out. You know what I mean? So, um, that one was, was different. I did not anticipate coming to Portugal, meeting anyone. I figured, you know, I might hang out, have a fling here and there, but mm-hmm. I doubt that I'm, you know, probably going to settle down. And then I met him and I was like, well, um, <laughs> to settle well, down. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And then I was like, I'm like 40. What am I now? 41, 42. Uh, I'm like, I don't want to be experiencing heartbreak. I remember calling my best friend from the States and I was like, I really like him. I said, you know how much this is going to hurt if this doesn't work out. Like I'm too old for heartbreak. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. <laughs> <She did>. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly I was wrong there. I, I think heartbreak comes, you know, I've seen like middle, one of the ladies I talked to not too long ago, she's like 50 something and she calls the husband, the ex-husband, the deadbeat. That's how she refers to him every time. You know? it's like, and I'm just like, and she's like, now I'm like middle age, I'm doing all this, I'm single again. There are things that you didn't even plan on. So yeah, yeah. the thing is like, you know, I think life is long. By the time I met, I was always saying, I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids. I mean, like from the time I could, walk I've always been like that so right. by the time I was 40 so I met my husband when I was 42 and got married at 42 and wow. by that time, so my mom was like, for me? is that what you're saying yes my mom was like eh. you know by that time nobody cared anymore <laughs> where did you meet your husband say it again where did you meet your husband I met him in Los Angeles actually wow <laughs> I know, it was so funny because it was just so random like we would have never met but that's just the way things happen so definitely don't think that there's no there's no hope you don't want to get married you don't want to have any kids but it hits you when you least expect it so Hmm. okay i'll try (laughs) i'll try to keep my heart open but that last one i think i'm better i think i'm broken (laughs) oh I'm so sorry. That sucks. Okay. It does <laughs> but it suck. gets better. But, you know, you I, keep it moving. And it was it was interesting because um so many of my friends know us together. And yeah. that's been interesting. So, you know, I'm talking to, you know, COVID is opening up some of the places. So I'm communicating a little bit more. And they're like, Oh, how's Ben? I'm like, Oh, I didn't mean to say his name, but <laughs> <laughs> how is he? And everyone's like, and I'm like, Yeah, we're not together anymore. Oh. And then of course everybody wants to know and everything, right? Actually, everyone's been pretty chill about it. They've like, you know, they'll say they're sorry. Do I need anything? And I, I guess, you know, we're all adults. So, you know, how heartbreak can be. And you don't, you know, be intrusive. So, um, so luckily, everybody's been, you know, really kind about it. And I'll tell them if they ask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, like, one of the, your vlogs. I love that vlog. <laughs> you know, one of your vlog had you apartment hunting in Lisbon. And you were showing some two, three bedroom apartments. So was that because you were planning that you had been planning on moving in with him? Well, we were living together. We were already living together. Um, hey. Yeah. So like I, I was in Portugal for probably, what was it? Two, three months. And then um, we went out and just never separated. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> so what it was that? one of those things. Like we we um, because I still apparently you know have to run back to the states every now and then. And so when I met him, um, I was on my way back to the states uh for a meeting, and he was like, "Do you, you know you let me take you to the airport?" And I was like, "No, I'm fine." And while I was in the states, he just you know would check up on me, and he was just really kind. And then when I came back. We went out and we just didn't separate for six months. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so it must have really been tough. I can understand why. Yeah, you know, it was tough. Because so when, cause before, I don't know if it was before I left, but um, I helped him find the apartment that he got. And then I kind of moved in. <laughs> 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 and so we were, we were together there. And then we... Um, what were some things with the apartment that uh, we kind of wanted to change and do things over and, and get some some privacy? Um, so that's kind of the other thing. Like, depending on how the apartments are laid out, if you do have guests or that type of thing, there's not that much privacy because you guys are, like, so close together and the walls are really thin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in the 
apartment searching that we were doing after that, we kind of looked for, you know, maybe a duplex or something where the rooms are, you know, kind of spaced out. So after staying there, we looked, we knew that that was kind of something that we were looking for, but that apartment video um, also had some apartments that I looked at when I first got there. So there are a couple one bedrooms there. um, And that was when Lisbon was extremely hot, you know, so all the prices prices were, Yeah. And so this is a thing that was kind of frustrating to me, which I know is extremely frustrating for those who are from Portugal. It's just the average wage is really low. I mean, I think it's, you know, minimum wage might be 700 euros a month. 600 outside of Lisbon and 700 in Lisbon, euros a month, which is like less than 750 or or $795 a month. Imagine that. And so you want, you have, the rents are so expensive. And I know, you know, for my house in D.C., you're just paying like $2,200 a month for a mortgage with three bathrooms, three um, three bedrooms, and a basement. So why is the price so expensive here for an apartment? And so granted, people say, oh, it's because you're in Lisbon. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's a bigger thing than that. Yes. <laughs> Even me, I, I expect it to be more expensive than it is, of course, outside the city. But what these prices are, are, are not even fair to the people no. who live here. And they're, they're being pushed out just like here, just like in Barcelona and a lot of other places. The, the locals cannot afford the rent. I don't even understand how governments feel that that is a good idea. Like that's just, that's not good. You know, if you have your whole, which is, and this is what I did know about Portugal, what was going to happen. I knew that they were going to experience a a real estate bubble because it is ridiculously expensive, the rents, particularly in Lisbon. And when your economy doesn't match that, then you're yeah. going to hit a bubble. And if, if, but it was interesting. The only people who understood that were Portuguese who had left Portugal and then mm-hmm. came back because yeah. when I went in, in Uber cars and I was like, they're going to experience the same real estate bubble we experienced in 2008, 2009. And no one seems yeah. to know it here. And they're like, yeah, no, we're totally going to get it. And now you're going to, you're going to start to see it. The rents are going to start to go down and um, there's a surplus of Airbnbs. I'm now starting to see those go on the market for long-term yes. rentals. So yep. it's about to get really interesting in, in Lisbon. I think the same thing is happening here. And we actually, cause my, you know, my hobby is like real estate. I just like checking out what's going on, the prices, you know, I've got like markups, like, so I get notified. And now I see a lot of rentals that were Airbnb because you can mm-hmm. recognize it. They've got the folded towels neatly, mm-hmm. like one way in the thing. And as soon as you see the picture, you're like Airbnb coming on the market. Airbnb, you know? mm-hmm. And so like, yeah, so it's going to happen all over the place and it's going to be really really devastating for some of these Airbnb owners who had put their all into like taking advantage of the high rent and everything. So I think, yeah, but I'm hoping it's a correction that's definitely needed. I'm hoping when the correction is done that people still kind of understand what could happen because you, but to not have any housing for your citizens is, is not fair. Yeah, it's not, it is not. I think, you know, when I saw your vlog and I saw the price and I go, wow, because, you know, there's a lot of big magazines and, you know, you see them every time you can move to Lisbon and live for like a thousand dollars a month. You can go live in Spain for, you know, and I'm just like, maybe a few years ago, maybe if you live like in Bumfuckville, you know, outside of the big city, but not Mm -hmm. in the city itself and the way they market it to these people. I hope yeah, and I, I feel like that's that's a bit of a trap. And I know even, you know, there are a lot of people who are coming to mind like, oh, you can find something cheap. I pay $300. And I think if you're if you're an expat and you're coming, depending, you know, whatever country you're coming from, again, in theory, you could definitely probably pay something less. But the people mm. who are saying that, you don't know what kind of amenities they want. Exactly. You, know I mean? you have to decide what kind of amenities you want. If you want to be in the city, you don't want a car and you want to be able to walk to the grocery store. You're going to pay a premium for that if you want to be, you know, right by the metro. And that's that's not just in Portugal or Spain. That's all over. The same thing exactly. as in D.C. If I live by a metro, I'm going to have to pay a premium for that. That's yeah. just duh. So I always think like, say you can like potentially have something cheaper. 
You have to decide what you want and the amenities that you want person. Do you want to live by a beach? Do you want to be in the city? Do you want to be in the country? If you don't want to be in any of those things, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to pay for what you want potentially. So in yeah. theory, granted, maybe you can find something cheaper, but when you get there, you will get the reality. Exactly. I always say, you know, if you're moving away from something, your, your, your level of living should be at least the same as where you came from or higher. So yeah. When I see people move from like, I don't know, the U.S., for instance, and they move to Thailand and they say you can live on $500 a month or whatever. And I'm like, so let me get this. You move from a house with a bathroom and your own space to like a shared bathroom, a shared room. And I mean, how does that make your life better? And I think that's some of the things you need to to think about before you move. Yes, it sounds lovely, but you're going to move to a place where, boom. You can't get a job, you know, and you're not allowed to get a job and you have to find something that you're doing online. Is it enough to even pay that $500? Right. I mean, there's so many things and sometimes people jump into it. A lot of times it's like marketing to them and, you know, they've got, they, they, they read all those things or they follow the bloggers and the, the super people who have done it and, you know, yeah, because there's this glamorousness that. about it that people want to, in my opinion, they want to market and get money off of. And I, I try to be transparent in everything that I do. And I just, I would, it would devastate me if someone kind of went off of my advice and just didn't know something. I'm like, no, 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 I, I don't, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm yeah. winging this. I let people know that. Like, look, exactly. I am winging this. Do and not- this is your story. <laughs> Do not. You know, this is your story. It's like, not you can like- ask some questions, <laughs> but I mean, my answers may be different. But yeah, you, you know, you just gotta try to fill it out and don't believe the glamour glamorousness of of it all. You know, if it looks too good to be true, um, and I'm not saying that I don't love Portugal. Like I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I really enjoy it. I like it. I love everything about it right now. Is it the end all be all? Like, will I be there for the rest of my life? I don't know. Um, but so far, um, there's nowhere else that I want to be. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the thing that you, you went there, you saw it, you liked it, you stayed. And, you know, the minute it stops being what you expect it to be or what you want it to be, then, like I said before, you could always just move and go on. You're still young. It's not like anybody's going to say, oh my God, cinnamon, you must, you know, you must be stoned because you went there and you didn't like it and you moved somewhere else. How dare you? You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's and for anyone way. listening, um, I know it sounds scary to be like, oh my gosh, you're moving out of a whole nother country. But if you're in the States, it's kind of similar to moving to another state. Um, other than the ticket price is going to be more expensive. And if you get rid of everything, then it's a lot easier. If you are still trying to hold on to all these material possessions, I would encourage you to get over that anyway. But yes. Yes. If you, yeah, if you can get over that, it, you can go somewhere else. Like I'm, I'm interviewing a woman who first went to Southeast Asia and that, and now she's in Sweden. And so you, you may not like it and that's okay. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. <laughs> you can go somewhere else. The, I think the hardest thing in my opinion is just understanding what you have to do to stay there. The immigration process and filing the paperwork and making sure you're doing things correctly, particularly when you don't speak the English is tough. So for me personally, because I'm from Washington, DC, every embassy is in DC. Mm-hmm. So if I ever have to get um, another visa to another country I would that doesn't that, that I don't speak the language I would probably always fly back to DC and, DC and, and take care of it there because right? <laughs> it was substantially easier um and I, I I try to do a video to kind of show people the visa process I went through for Portugal and then there's steps to it you know what I mean so you you'll get like a you know a long stay and then you have to file for you know permanent residency and that takes six years you know so there's there's steps to it and so yeah. when I went to the website even in the states it didn't make sense so I would have questions they would say if you have questions email here I would email here and they're like well then you gotta come in for appointment I was like well this is an appointment worthy can you just answer my question (laughs) no (laughs) so you go into appointment and then the woman's like well hand me your application I said I don't have it because I don't know what I'm doing (laughs) exactly I just came to ask a question so I (laughs) so I can see if I want to do what I think I want to do yeah she gave me a checklist she was like you need everything on this checklist and I'm like why do you guys don't put this on your website I could have saved everyone time but you know it is what it is (laughs) we'll get back to this show in just a minute 
the meantime, make sure to subscribe to the Next Bite of Life podcast right where you're listening. If you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, any of the platforms, you can just hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified anytime there's a new episode. So make sure you do that. Now back to the show. If you had to put a dollar figure in the cost of living, like how much you spend monthly for one person a uh, month, what, right. would that, what would that be? It's really hard for me to answer this question because it, 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 I would say, for, okay, so, so we'll base it off of me personally. And mm-hmm. if you're, you don't have the level of amenities that you need. Um, so the apartment that we were staying in was uh, 2,200 euros a month. It was a three bedroom, three bathroom apartment. It was pretty massive. Um, The biggest expense is going to be your rent and that is slowly coming down. So check with me again when I actually get another apartment. (laughs) Um, So the rent is expensive, but the food, so the food is, I would say I'm basing everything on two of us because we already did grocery shopping for two. So I would say we probably spent about, maybe 200 to 300 dollars a month on food yeah, and that's, that's just so when we're cooking because we both like to cook so mm-hmm. now if you go to restaurants a lot and particularly if you're in lisbon you can lose your mind because they yep. have some restaurants that are just as expensive as they are in the states oh um, yeah <laughs> and they also have restaurants that are you know smaller and cheaper and i would to be honest with you because i was in lisbon and because i you know was still kind of new to things I didn't uh, get all the way educated on some of the, you know, mom and pop spots to go to because, you know, Lisbon's extremely touristy. So there's restaurants Mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes. Um, So I'm just just was in the process of kind of learning that. Um, But, you know, again, you know, me and my ex, we cook most of the time in the grocery store. We had to assume that was literally like two two doors down that we would just, you know, cook everything every day. So our groceries ran probably about two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars um, a month. Transportation, I took Uber a lot, or I walked. I walked a good portion. We lived in um, Estefania, mm-hmm. which is close to. If you're feeling really, you know, ambitious, you can walk downtown. But to most of the places mm-hmm. where I wanted to eat or do anything was walking distance. Okay. So if you take so, the rent out, I don't. I didn't give you a full number. So if you t- if rent aside, <laughs> um. I would say the the incidentals may run about five hundred dollars, and then tack that on, uh, not dollars, euro, excuse me, mm-hmm. and then tack on whatever your rent is going to be. Now, does that include healthcare as well? So, with okay, so that depends on which country you're coming from. So, if you're coming from the U.S., you are going to have to have travelers' health insurance, um, even okay. for your visa. So, for your visa. Um, for Portugal, you need 30,000 euros um, to apply for your long stay visa. And that's annually. And that cost me, I think it was like 349 annually. So that's substantially cheaper than any form of insurance in the States. Yes. <laughs> that's more like a one month payment, right? Exactly. <laughs> for, for exactly. So basically, you're talking about let's see, 30. So you'd say 700 euros plus whatever your rent is. We're just about covered. Uh, well, 700 euros, that sounds on the high, the high end. Your, your insurance, you only had to pay that annually. So, and you probably paid that before you came to Portugal. So far as monthly expense, I would say it's about, I would say 500 euros. Uh, hmm. And at, one, at, at some point, I'm going to sit down and actually get my receipts together. I said I was going to do that. I haven't done it yet. Um, oh, that sounds really about, cheap. Yeah, I would say about five hundred because that would include like your 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 uh, electric and your um, water. Water is not really that expensive. Electric is kind of pricey, particularly in the winter because you yeah, usually it's pricey energy. here too. Yeah, and one of the tips someone told me was also to try to get some gas component in there because if you're doing your electricity off of um, your heat off mm-hmm. of electricity and when you're using your water and your water mm-hmm. has to be heated by electricity, it can be pretty pricey. Oh yeah. Cause um, one of the things we were looking for when we were set in apartment hunting, it's like we want gas, everything as much as we can. Cause gas, we, we cook 
at home all the time. Mm-hmm. We, you know, the, the shower, the water runs off of gas and we pay like on a bad, bad month, we'll pay like 19 euros a month. Mm-hmm. Whereas our old apartment that had electric um, boiler for the water, we were paying about 80 or 90 euros, I think, by the time we left a month. So there's quite a difference. You know? Yeah, it's a, it's a huge difference. And I think the apartment we were in, we had like gas, our, st- our stove was gas. Um, I think our heat, uh, I think our heat was electric and our electric bill was probably, it was, it was pretty pricey. And the thing is it had um, a waterless tank water heater, which I feel okay. like I need in every apartment I'm in. Yes, now. we do. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> it is amazing. And I wouldn't have known that because I know I would stay in some Airbnbs and I would lose hot water. Cause I like, and then two, I need my water on dragon. Like I need my water so hot. It is burning off my skin. Yes, me too. <laughs> so that when you have these little teeny water heaters, like you run out of it in like five yeah. minutes and yeah. that, um, tankless water heater. Like, so now when I look for apartments, I look for that. I'm like, if exactly. that ain't here, I can't stay here. <laughs> So those type of amenities you start to, you know, look for once you know. And again, that's not something you know until you get there. Exactly. So now you said you cooked at home a lot. Mm -hmm. So I know Portugal is like here. I've been to Lisbon and I see like the, the, there's a lot of uh, fruterias everywhere. So you can get fresh veggies. I mean, Mm -hmm. things that you didn't even think existed in the States because everything was packed, but you've got lots of fruits and you know and it's not so pricey and isn't that the the best thing like the, the is, best thing to be able to shop for that stuff dream. it is an absolute dream and it's not it's 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 also that it's not pricey i mean i feel like in the states like i would have to go to whole foods just to <laughs> get yeah, money in whole true. foods you know they call it a whole paycheck because you leave yeah. there with five <laughs> items and you spend like 150 dollars um so here and just the access of being able to get it in like a corner store, like you can just run to the corner and get like a wonderful melon and you can do that here. I mean, corner stores, you would get like cigarettes and beer. Yeah. And you can get like <laughs> exactly. <and> <laughs> it's true. I, so it's I'm so access. spoiled. Yeah. The access to things have, have, you know, just been great. And just like the kind of like, you can go grab a melon and then go sit by the water. You know, you could just eat it. <laughs> right. It's just yeah. really amazing, and I feel you know blessed to have the experience. And I really, I would encourage more people to just you know take the leap. Is it scary? Absolutely. Like the, I think the first yeah. week, I cried the whole yeah. every every day that week. Yeah. And I was it. I, I, when I first moved, I moved to um, I stayed in Lisbon for a couple of weeks, and then I went to Cascais. And okay. I went there because the gentleman on the plane was like, oh, no, Lisbon's too expensive. You got to check it out here. And that place is, because guys, is probably one of the most expensive places I was just going to say, it's also been discovered by a lot of expats. So. You know? So, yeah, you know, the I prices go, are high. <laughs> yeah, I go there. It's a, And it's a beautiful place. But it's, in my opinion, it's also very, it's either beachy or family oriented. Yes. And so... I didn't have either. I didn't feel like I need to be on a beach all the time. And I didn't have a family. And then things close early. Like it, the kitchen I had there, I didn't know until I got there. It wasn't really conducive for cooking. Um, mm, and the grocery Airbnb store wasn't style. <laughs> yeah, it was Airbnb. And the um, grocery store wasn't that close. So mm. I... Had so I was looking for restaurants and things, and I could, I could, everything was closed at like eight, and I'm like, oh no, I can't live like this. <laughs> exactly, you need to be like, <laughs> yeah, it's okay if you have a family, if you're doing this, and the kids have to get to school tomorrow. But yeah, it seemed really residential. You really needed to be like it, closer yeah, to the it, city. Yes, it's extremely residential, and again, not that anything's wrong with that. But for someone like me who is just by myself, I wanted to meet more, more people, I want to learn the language, I wanted to you know, be social, it wasn't really the place. So I got there and immediately started thinking like, did I make a wrong decision? And I was sad and I was lonely and I was like, what have I done? And, you know, I'm crying and just, you know, the emotion with it before it was, it was a ton of emotion when I first got there. I feel like maybe the first two weeks were probably the roughest. And then I met a woman from New York and I felt like she had a great deal to do with me feeling comfortable because she, she was, you know, younger than me, but she was sharing um, an apartment with some other um, expats. And so we just started to kind of get a routine and hang out. And so 
I started to have or experience some form of community and that made me feel good. And I'm also an introvert. So I just needed a little bit of that. And then I can kind of get myself together and isolate (laughs) and go explore by myself. And then, um, you know, I met other people and then I met my ex and, you know, it was a wrap. See, that's, that's part of, you know, you come there, you're fearful. It's terrifying. Yes, we all know, you know, you leave your family behind and blah, blah, blah. But you get there and you start to make your way. You can't get there and expect the first day to be like Nirvana. It right. slowly, you know, just right. even if you were moving next door or to a different neighborhood in the U.S., right. you still have to adjust to the new neighborhood and try and get to meet people. And, you know, you start to join right. gyms, you know, do things like find a routine and eventually it gets better, you know, but you've got to mm-hmm. hang in there. You just can't go in with a like gungo and then you know, fall into a depression because it didn't work out exactly the way you pictured it. That's not the way life works. Right. You have to be adaptable. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So where did you write out out the COVID-19? Did you stay in Portugal? Yeah. Well, no, I um, came back to the States actually right before COVID. Me and my best friend were taking a trip to Curacao. So her and I had a girl's trip to Curacao. So once we got back to, from Curacao, I actually got sick. I oh. don't know what happened, but I just wasn't feeling well. And so, you know, went to the doctor and then um, broke up with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so what did it mean to pause? <laughs> right. So I'm emotional about that. Probably sick for like a good week trying to get my life together. And then COVID happened. And so... Initially, I was scheduled to fly back. And so, and it's been crazy because I've been here for, I don't know, two, been in the States for like two months. And I have like no clothes because when I came here, <laughs> I, was com- I was coming to an island. I was coming to go to an island for like, yeah. you know, a couple days and then fly back to Portugal. Um, and so that turned into like, what, two and a half months. And so, wow. um, and then the thing is, I don't want to like accumulate stuff here just to take back there. So I'm like... Exactly. And for a while, it didn't matter because we were just, we were literally stuck in the house and, you know, I just didn't get dressed much anyway. And now it's starting to open. I'm like, I guess I'll grab a couple of things from Target, but (laughs) I don't want to, you know, I definitely don't want to acquire more stuff to have to take, you know, take back. So that's, that's been a bit, bit interesting, but yeah. So I don't know things worked out well, um, because I had to get surgery and I, and I'm going to get surgery and I would have had to fly back from Portugal. So now that I'm already here, that works out. And then I can just get the surgery and kind of go. And then go. Oh, yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Well, that's yeah. good. So let me finish up the interview by asking you what advice you would give to somebody else who was thinking of doing the same thing, older, younger, whoever, whoever wants to do it. What advice would you, would you give them? Um, I think the biggest thing is just be gentle with yourself, um, to know that to make such a, a a big move, there's going to be some mistakes. There's going to be some emotions. There are going to be some things you just didn't know. And you just really have to be gentle with yourself. And, um, I know sometimes we can beat ourselves up if if we're not perfect (laughs) Mm -hmm. and there's no way to kind of know. Uh, a lot of things until you do it with so many things in life you just may not know until you actually do it and so during the process um, whether you make mistakes or whether you didn't know something or whether someone's unkind to you or whatever just know that you just need to be gentle with yourself and just embrace all these new experiences that you're, you'll have like in the six in six months or seven months when I first uh, started to experience things, I had experienced more in that seven months than I had experienced in the past two decades. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, and that was worth it. I mean, the people you meet, because you'll find that once you start traveling, even mm-hmm. if you stay in the States, once you start traveling, when you come back, you are going to be able to identify with a lot of people. Um, exactly. The friends that you have, that you love, the family that you have, that you love. Sometimes your conversations, you, you, you're you just not going to be able to identify. So the, the fascinating thing about when you leave the country is you meet other cultures, other people, but you also meet other expats that yeah. seem to be more on your wavelength because they yes. made the jump and they've seen experiences and they've done things. And they've, and, and so you get, you get that as well. So if you are someone who kind of feels like no one gets it and you do travel a lot, it, 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 it you definitely get that camaraderie when you, when you leave the country. Great. 
So thank you so much for being on the show, Cinnamon. For everybody listening, make sure you check out her YouTube channel called Driven Spice. You can also find her on Instagram with the same name, the same handle, Driven Spice. And of course, on the, the website, nextbiteoflife.com, I'll have the information on how to get in touch with her and also the handles and the website. So make sure that you check her out. Very informative. And she tells it like it is what her experience is moving to <laughs> moving to Portugal and life and the whole. So Cinnamon, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. Yes, I've had a blast. Thank you so much for having me. 